So, I've been playing some newer games recently and something's been bothering. We're in 2025. We've got all these new buffy GPUs, we've got all these latest CPUs, we've got all these fancy AI technology. And somehow, games don't look that much better than they did 7 years ago. Okay, Red Dead Redemption 2 came out in 2018. That's 7 years ago and you know what? It looks better than most AAA games coming out today. And that's not nostalgia talking. That's a fundamental problem with how gaming industry has decided to approach visual fidelity. First, let's talk about Red Dead Redemption 2 for a second. This game came out in October 2018 and it's still being used as the benchmark for graphics quality. People on Steam are still saying 2024 and this is still the best looking game out there. And they're not wrong. RDR2 had photorealistic character models, dynamic weather system, incredible lighting, and environmental detail that's still unmatched to this day. The game was so technically impressive that it won awards for technical achievement at multiple gaming ceremonies. This was Rockstar pushing the absolute limits of what was possible. Now, fast forward to 2024-2025, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 with its updates, Baldur's Gate 3, and all these new releases, and honestly, the visual improvement is marginal at best. I mean, sure, some games have better ray tracing, but the core visual fidelity? The thing that makes you go, wow, hasn't really moved the needle. And here's the thing, we're running these games on hardware that's significantly more powerful than what RDR2 was designed for. Red Dead Redemption 2 was optimized to run on GTX 1080 Ti's or RX 580's, cards that are now considered low to mid-range at best. Yet, somehow, we're not seeing proportional improvements in visual quality. It's like we hit this plateau around 2018 and 2019, and instead of climbing higher, the industry just stopped trying. But why? And here's where things get really frustrating. Modern games are obsessed with one thing, upscaling. DLSS, FSR, XCSS, all these technologies are everywhere. And don't get me wrong, they're impressive tech. Upscaling can transform a 30fps experience into a 60 plus one, which sounds amazing on paper. But here's the dirty thing that nobody wants to talk about. Developers are using these technologies as a crutch. Some developers are literally designing games with upscaling in mind from the ground up, instead of optimizing their games to run well natively. They're just assuming everyone will turn on DLSS or FSR. This is lazy development, plain and simple. When your game needs AI upscaling just to hit 60fps at 1080p, that's not a feature. That's a band-aid covering poor optimization. And by the way, if you don't know what, what this feature that? does, it's basically, it takes lower resolution frames and outputs higher resolution ones, which means you're not technically getting a true 4K gaming. You're getting a 1440p or 1080p upscaled to that resolution. And the worst part? This creates a vicious cycle. Developers know upscaling exists, so they don't bother optimizing anymore. And hardware manufacturers push upscaling because it makes their older cards seem more capable, and gamers just accept it because they say, hey, at least I'm getting 60 FPS. Meanwhile, we're getting games like Dragon's Dogma 2 that can bring modern hardware to its knees in certain areas. Not because they look incredible, but because they're poorly optimized. Dragon's Dogma 2 has become a popular benchmarking tile due to its performance-intensive areas, but for all the wrong reasons. Take about the jump from 2011 to 2018. We went from Skyrim to Red Dead Redemption 2. That's a massive visual leap. Better textures, lightings, character models, everything. Now, think about 2018 to 2025. We've got slightly better ray tracing and more realistic hair physics in some games. I mean, the improvements are incremental at best. Cyberpunk 2077 is often compared to RDR2 for graphics quality and honestly, it's a toss-up depending on what you're looking at. That's a problem when one game came out in 2018 and other in 2020s. We've got RTX 4090s that are multiple times more powerful than the RTX 2080 Ti. We've got 32 gigs of RAM as a standard, NVMe SSDs, CPUs with 16 plus cores, and yet graphics hasn't scaled proportionally as its specs requirement. Part of this is the law of diminishing returns. Once you hit photorealism, Improvements become harder to notice, but that's not the whole story. The real issue is that the industry has gotten comfortable with good enough. Publishers are more interested in releasing games that can run on as many systems as possible, including lower-end hardware. 
Why push visual boundaries when you can make more monies by ensuring your games runs on a Steam Deck? It's a business decision, not a technical limitation. And here's the big question. Do graphics actually matter? And honestly, my answer is yes, but not really. But also maybe? Look, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that Sardo Valley is worse than GTA V just because of the graphics. Some of the best games ever made looks like it was made on MS Paint. And gameplay will always be the main thing. But yes, graphics do matter, just not in the ways most people think. It's not about having the most realistic texture or the most accurate lighting. It's about creating an experience that draws you in and makes you believe in the world that you're playing in. Nintendo figured this out many years ago. Breath of the Wild doesn't have the most technically impressive graphics, but it has incredible art direction. The game looks timeless because it prioritized art style over raw photorealism. The problem with the current obsession with photorealism is that it creates games that doesn't really look unique. RDR2 looks incredible, but it's the exception, not the rule. Most games from 2018 already look aged compared to what we can do now. But games with strong art direction? The age like fine wine. I mean, Wind Waker still looks gorgeous 20 years later. Team Fortress 2 could have been released yesterday. And Persona 5 still looks better than most photorealistic games despite being stylized. I mean, prioritizing graphics over anything else is expensive. Really expensive. These massive budgets for photorealistic games are the part of why we're seeing fewer experimental titles fewer mid-budget games, and more risk-averse publishers. Uh, so do graphics really matter? Yeah, they do, but not in the way the industry thinks they do. Art direction matters, visual consistency matters, and creating believable world matters. Raw polygon counts and texture resolution? That's just technical masturbation at this point. Okay, let's admit it. The graphics race is over. It ended around 2018 to 2019. We've reached the point where games could look photorealistic, and everything since then has just been incremental improvements that most people can't even notice. The fact that upscaling technology is now considered essential tells you everything you need to know. We're not pushing boundaries at this point. We're finding clever ways to make mediocre optimization look acceptable. Games take longer to develop, cost more to make, and marginally better than they did 5 years ago. And meanwhile, developers are relying to AI to fill in the gaps rather than actually optimizing their game. It's frustrating, really. Players are complicit to this. We keep buying games that require upscaling to run properly, then praising the developers for innovation when they implement DLSS support. We're rewarding their laziness. So, what should we expect from game graphics going forward? Honestly, more of the same. Better upscaling algorithms, more reliance on AI, and incremental improvements that require increasingly expensive hardware to notice. The next big leap won't probably happen from a better graphics card. It'll come from a better art direction, more creative use of technology, and maybe some developer actually deciding to optimize their game properly. If you want to see real innovation in game visuals, look at indie games. They can't rely on raw technical power, so they have to be creative. They prioritize art direction over polygons, and honestly, many of them look better than AAA games. My advice? Stop getting caught up in the game's graphics. Judge games by their gameplay, not their technical specifications. And maybe, just maybe, enjoy games with quote-unquote bad graphics. Anyways, that's my take on why game graphics stopped improving. And if you think I'm wrong or if you got other examples of recent games that actually push visual boundaries, just let me know in the comments below. And anyways, that's it for today's video. See ya!